you, Joanna. Good morning. Good morning. Turn my light on here. <clears throat> looks like we're a little looks like we're a little light today. Obviously, word had not gotten out that I was going to be the liturgist. <laughs> Say, I want to I want to thank everyone. Um, you probably know, but I I had uh, hip replacement surgery, and um, I wasn't really wanting to make a big deal out of it. I never didn't intend it to be in the bulletin or anything, but we had a lot of people that, uh, you know, said, how are you doing, and wish me well, and all that, and that, really, I just wanted to let you know that it was really nice of you to do that, and um, so it's, it's gone well, I feel good, um, but there's also another advantage to not only not having that discomfort, but it was a really good excuse to get out of things for a while, like way back, I don't know, November or something, Bombson asked me if I would be in that ecumenical choir, and I said, oh, you know, I'm going to have this hip surgery. I really better not do it. And he said, okay, okay. And so then uh, Ann asked me if I would be liturgist in December, and I said, oh, Ann, you know, I got this hip surgery. I just really better not do that. And so, and then also I noticed, like, if ever I'd get up from the table a little bit stiff and move kind of slow, Roberta would say, oh, can I, can I get you something? Can I get the milk? If I drop something on the floor, can I pick that up? But sadly, I think that's coming to an end because last week, you know, Bombson was doing the uh, recordings of people reading this, the uh, scriptures, and uh, Drew and I were standing out in the hallway, and <laughs> Sherry comes out and just all happy, you know, like she normally is, and said, oh, yeah, I just did that scripture reading. You could, you could go in and do that right now. I said, oh, Sherry, you know, I had this hip replacement. I could tell by her response that I've just about played that card all the way that I could. She said, Eric, it has nothing to do with your leg. It's from here up. <laughs> so I guess I can no longer use that excuse. So anyway, again, thank you. Uh, let's see. Welcome and announcements. Prayer request cards are in the pews. Bell Choir and Chancel Choir this Wednesday, is that yes. correct? Yes. And then Thursday, Joyful Noise, February the 29th. We've had that before, like about every four years we get one of those. So February the 29th, Joyful Noise Practice. Sunday, March 3rd, so next week, congregation meeting, which would be all of us after the worship service. And Roberta kind of gave me a little bit of a heads up on this, kind of like talk about budget and everything church related to that. That should be interesting. And then uh, next Tuesday, a week from Tuesday, the Ecumenical Women's Group breakfast here at 9 a.m. And then, Sarah, you have an announcement, right? Yes, thank you. I thought that you would like to know, just in case you around 60 pounds, 60 cans of, of soup. Um, and, and to add to that, I wanted you to know that uh, in 2023 uh, total, we fed uh, well over 4,000 families, which amounted to around 13,000 individuals. And we uh, distributed at, at well over, I, it, it's hard to keep account of this, but we, we distributed well over 37,000 pounds of food at the food pantry. So thank you for helping us with that effort. We appreciate that so much. That's great. Other announcements? Oh. So good morning. Yeah. So as uh, Eric mentioned about the Bible reading recording, I am continuously to doing it. So after the worship service, if you are willing to record your Bible reading for the Lenten season, please stay in the sanctuary, then I will let you record the Bible reading. And do Sarah, do we have uh, the brief church council meeting today after worship service? Yes, please. Yes, we do. Yes, so there will be church council meeting after worship service, so please stay. Thank you.
Anything else for the good of the group? Then if you uh, are able, let's uh, rise and uh, join in the call to worship. <clears throat> Welcome this day to the second step on our Lenten journey. We come with great hope and expectations as we walk the way of Christ. Today's journey will demand much of us. Lord, make us ready to offer ourselves to you. Come, let us begin again the wondrous excursion. Let us place our lives in God's body and love. And the opening hymn is number 451, Be Thou My Vision. of presence and power, be with us on this second step of our Lenten journey to the cross. Help us to make a commitment of our lives, our spirits, our hearts to ministry in your name. Amen. And now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Okay. So today, I'd wanted to talk to you about a little bit of difficult things. I believe I told you easy things always. <laughs> That's what I hope to believe. <laughs> but let me say one of the little bit of difficult things what Jesus said today. So do you think Jesus always told us a good word or tender words or word of compliment? <laughs> 
Oh, give me a seizure, Kavi. Seizure? Yes, thank you. Dangerous. Okay. All right. So, do you think Jesus always told us about like a good word, like a, you are good, you are nice, you are so great? No. Jesus sometimes gave us strict word, very strict and strong word. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> no, she doesn't, I believe. No, you don't. Anyway, Jesus sometimes gives us a very strict way. And today, today's Bible verse is one of the strict words from Jesus Christ. Jesus said, word to you. Oh, difficult word. All right. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. Hypocrites. What is the hypocrites? Do you know what hypocrites means? This is what, this is what I want to talk about. Hypocrites. Hypocrites simply says, you say good things in your mouth, but actually you do bad things. That is a kind of hypocrisy, and Jesus said, you shall not do this. Can you find an example about when you say good things, but actually doing bad things? Can you find an example? Can you find an example, Henry? Let me give you a, like a little bit of an example. It is not about actually hypocrisy. But it is, we can find it in our actual life, in your actual life. Doing, saying, saying doing good, but not doing good. When you said, okay, mom, I'll clean my room after 10 minutes. And what happened after 10 minutes? If you're doing nothing, that's hypocrites. Let me give you another example. What my kids doing to she doesn't understand what, he's, what she says, but every time she punches me, immediately she says, sorry. <laughs> she doesn't know what, his, what her behavior is, but you know. But you know, and Henry, you know that too. That means she do that or not. Yeah, right. <laughs> So simply says, hypocrites is not matching between what you say and what what does your heart say? What does your heart speak to you to do? Then do it. If you say good things, then do it. If you say Will clean my toy after five minutes, then do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> All right. That is what we need to do. And that is what many kids cannot do it, I know. But what if? What if the adult don't do it? What if the adults say, All right, I love you, I'll help the people, I'll kill the people, but if they just stay at the room. If we not, if we don't do in your age what you say, then it could be worse when you grow up. That is why important to know the word of Jesus Christ, the message of Jesus Christ, to be grown up as good people, as a good man, as a good God. All right? All right. So I hope you remember. I hope you to remember what you shall do. Do what you say. Do what you say. So please listen and repeat. Do what I say. Do what you say. Do what we say. And do what Jesus says. What you just says. I said that. Good. All right. Let us pray. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, please give us good heart to listen to you, 
to follow you, to obey you, and to keep your word. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And now the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. to page 752 in your hymnal. So we'll sing the response to, I know you've been through this, but for my own benefit, I'm gonna say this out loud. We'll sing the response number two, and then we'll go over to page 753 and start with verse 25 down through 31, and that'll be responsive. And then we'll sing that response number two again. comes my praise in the great congregation. 
The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise the Lord, and their hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before the Lord. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. All who go down to the dust shall bow before the Lord, and I shall live for God. Each generation shall tell of the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn. Preparation number 454. to raise up for gospel lesson today. Today's gospel lesson comes from Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23, verses 13 through 22. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you lock people out of the kingdom of heaven. For you do not go in yourselves, and when others are going in, you stop them. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cross the sea and land to make a single convert, and you make the new convert twice as much a child of hell as yourselves. Woe to you blind guys who say, whoever swears by the sanctuary is bound by nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the sanctuary is bound by the earth. You blind the fools, for which is greater, the gold or the sanctuary that has made the gold sacred? And you say, whoever swears by the altar is bound by nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on the altar is bound by the earth. How blind you are, for which is greater, the gift of the altar that makes the gift sacred. So whoever swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it. And whoever swears by the sanctuary swears by it, and by the one who dwells in it. And whoever swears by heaven, swears by the throne of God, and by the one who is seated upon it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. 
the last days of Jesus Christ. Tuesday, number one. In this Lent season, we are looking at the stories what happened in the last during the last days of Jesus Christ. Last week, we looked at the story on Monday. Jesus cursed the fig tree and cleaned the temple. Related with the story of the temple and cursing the fig tree, Jesus taught us that our life must be must bear the fruits. The temple was like a fruitless fig tree. Priests, scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, experts of the law, they were like leaves, not fruits. They used their authority for their own purpose and lost their true purpose of the temple, of the worship, and of their position. So today's story, the story of the Tuesday morning, is continued from Monday's story. In today's Bible, Jesus denounced scribes and Pharisees, which is fruitless leaves. In today's Bible, Jesus uses strong word, word to you. Why? And what happened on Tuesday? To look at Tuesday's story, we need to have a little background of the time of Gospel and time of New Testament. And how their society runs, and what is the meaning of the position of religious leaders. So their religious leaders, Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, and councils, they were also the social and political leaders too. because. Their society was based on religious, religion, and their authority comes from their tradition, which is Moses' law. And they, this group, they were only one who taught about Moses' law and who taught about the tradition, which means people believed their teaching and obeyed what they said. Thus, their power their wealth, their authority, everything they had, it came from their teaching and their tradition. Means their teaching must be right. If their teaching is wrong, then their, their power will be gone. If someone says their teaching is wrong, and if someone can prove it, then it means they will lose what they have forever. This is a little bit background of the situation in their tradition. And that is why, that's why they tried to kill Jesus. They tried to kill Jesus very hard. There is another prophet before Jesus. We know, name is John, John the Baptist. They didn't try to kill John the Baptist, but they tried to kill Jesus. And there is a big difference between John the Baptist and Jesus of Nazareth. John shouted repentance and baptized people. And also John criticized about the religious leaders too, but John did not say anything about their tradition. John did not directly touch their tradition. There were lots of the people who followed John, but those followers also obeyed the teachings of religious leaders which they had. So even though their followers and their power is growing up, it did not really matter to the religious leaders, Pharisees, Sadducees, or scribes, because of the followers didn't have dot of teaching of religious leaders. But Jesus of Nazareth, his teaching was a different. Jesus gave them new teaching, new interpretation, and new commandment. Jesus directly encountered the teachings which they had. As Jesus' followers become many, as Jesus' followers become powerful, 
it becomes a threat to the religious leaders at that time. This is kind of the social context at that time. Thus, for the religious leaders, Jesus must not be the Messiah. Jesus must not be the Son of God. Jesus must not be the prophet. Jesus must not be right. If he is the prophet, if he is the Messiah, if he is the Son of God, if he is right, that means the religious leaders are wrong and they will lose everything they have, their power, their authority, their wealth, their position, everything will be gone if he is right. Those religious leaders tried to attack Jesus of Nazareth many, 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 many times while he was ministering in Galilee for three years. But every attempt was failed. They tried to frame his teaching as a heresy, as a blasphemy, as a fraud, or not authentic. And the typical way of attacking is, why do you not keep the Sabbath? But it was, all, it was all failed. Every time they failed. There were several religious groups, religious leaders, the group of religious leaders, councils, Pharisees, Sadducees, and the experts of the laws. As they have a group, they have different stances. And sometimes they fought each other. They disputed each other. They didn't agree each other sometimes, but they had one common enemy, Jesus of Nazareth. They had enemy, Jesus of Nazareth. And when Jesus came into Jerusalem, they got cautions about the the power of Jesus Christ, because everybody says, Hosanna, son of David! Hosanna, son of David! And we, when Jesus came into the temple and smashed everything, their hostility became max. It was maximized through the entering of Jerusalem and the, the cleansing of the temple by smashing everything. So, even though they didn't agree each other, they became one. They made unity. They made one group to defeat Jesus Christ. They were very expertized about Bible teachings from Old Testament. And they believed that they, could, that they can defeat Jesus Christ by their tradition and by their teaching. And to defeat Jesus Christ, it shouldn't be anyone, but it should be very special one, who is the elite of the elite. Imagine, when you have a war, you cannot attack by yourself. You have to gather power, you have to gather a people, and you have to pick the warrior who is the strongest. That is the, what they did. They had one common strongest enemy, Jesus of Nazareth, and they had to prepare the strong warrior, the elite of the biblical knowledge. And they were waiting when Jesus comes. If they can defeat Jesus Christ, then they can say, Jesus is not Messiah. Jesus is not a prophet. He, he did blasphemy. So according to our law, we can stone Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. We can kill him. And if they can kill him, their power became stronger, became like a, like a form. They can, it can be confirmed. So it was their ideal situation, ideal dream, ideal vision to defeat Jesus Christ by their tradition and by their teaching. In Tuesday morning, Jesus came back to Jerusalem again, went to the temple, began to teach. 
This was the moment they were waiting for. So in Tuesday morning, there are theological disputation between religious leaders and Jesus. And their purpose, their intention is the only one to prove Jesus is wrong, to defeat him. So let me explain this like a battle, like a war between religious leaders and Jesus Christ. Round one, the chief priest and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? And Jesus said, Oh, all right. Answer my question. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? They could and they could not answer. They lost. They lose. And round two, another group came. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they asked, Teacher, tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus said, Give therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Failed. Round three, Sadducees came to him, saying there is no resurrection, and they asked him a question. <coughs> Teacher, Moses said, if a man dies childless, his brother shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. There was a widow who married with seven brothers. In the resurrection, then, whose wife of the seven will she be? All of them had married her. Jesus said, mm -mm -mm. In the resurrection, people neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angel of God in heaven. Because the God is not the God of dead, and God is the God of living. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, and they are living. They failed again. When the Pharisees round four, when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, an expert in the law, <coughs> asked him a question to test him. What is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet. I preached, I have preached about this, those conversations separately several times, and all of those questions are very tricky, and it had, it had <coughs> clear intention to entrap him. It has a political trap, it has a social trap, it has a religious trap, and they may say it cannot she Jesus cannot escape from the trap, but Jesus did. They failed. All of them were failed, and there was no one who can offense Jesus. Council, Pharisees, Sadducees, and the expert of the law tried to offense Jesus, but Jesus defensed all. So now is round five. Round five. So Jesus asked to all of them. After he finished his defensing, now he's turned to offense them. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? And they said to him, the son of David. And Jesus said, David called him as the Lord. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone 
dare to ask him any more question. This is the last disputation between religious leaders and Jesus Christ. Because they realize that Jesus cannot be defeated by their knowledge, by their teaching, and by their interpretation, interpretation of the Bible. They realize that they cannot frame Jesus of Nazareth as the blasphemy, heresy, or cult. And they realize that Jesus, the word of Jesus, is strong and powerful, so they cannot defeat it. Thus, they tried to find another way to kill Jesus Christ. Because they couldn't defeat him. Because they couldn't stone him. Because they couldn't punish him according to their law. So instead of their tradition, they tried to use another law, another system of the Roman Empire. And we know the result. Crucifixion. This is the moment when they decided to crucify Jesus Christ. This is what happened on Tuesday morning. It is described from Matthew chapter 21 to 23. They tried to defeat Jesus to prove Jesus is wrong and they are right, but all their attempts are failed. And Jesus strongly denounced them. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Woe to you, woe to you. You testify against yourselves that you are descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Truly I tell you, all this will come upon this generation. Jesus denounced them seven times. Strictly, seven times. Because they used the name of God to prove they are right and to prove Jesus is wrong. And they did not try to see the truth of God. They did not try to find the will of God. But instead, they created their own image of God in their mind, in their brain, in their interpretation and made it frame and put God's nature into the frame. That is the what they did. That is the thought what they did. And Jesus said, Woe to you, Pharisees, scribes, and hypocrites. When there were mistakes, faults, sins in human relationships, Jesus tenderly forgave them always. Let me bring this Bible verse again. When Peter asked Jesus, Lord, if my brothers or sisters sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And when there is a sins against human, when there, and Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. Jesus never blamed the sin when they made the sin against the human and human. When there were prostitutes, when there were tax collectors, when everybody blamed them, Jesus never blamed them, but embraced them tenderly because it could be happened. Because imperfectness of human being and because of a limitation of human being. For example, when I make a mistake or fault against you, like a Jew, if I make a mistake against you, will you forgive me? Probably, Probably yes. <laughs> all right. And, all right. And if I make a mistake against you, will you forgive me? Absolutely, thank you so much. And if one of you make a mistake against of me, absolutely I will forgive. Because that is what Jesus did. However, this is a different case. 
This is when religious leaders against God and they, real, they didn't realize. Jesus strictly blamed them. Do not use God's name for yourself. Do not use God's name for your purpose. The Ten Commandments says, You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. The religious leaders tried to frame Jesus as blasphemy, but what they did was blasphemy actually. They did not try to see the truth, did not try to see the, seek the will of God, and but they used their authority to prove they are right. If we are looking for the name of the Lord, to fulfill our will, to fulfill our justice, to prove we are right, there will be always bad result, like a division, like a conflict, like a chaos. We ask God to our need through the prayer, Lord, please listen to me. Please fulfill my need. But we should not use the God's name. That is the big difference. Pray to God. Use the name of God. It is a big difference and we must realize it. Because asking God is the life of the fruits. And it creates another fruits. It planting the seed. But if we use the name of God, there will be nothing but only division, chaos, and conflict. Lent is a season to ask God's will in our life. God's name is not the tool to prove we are right, but to find a way how to love and serve. So let us remember Tuesday morning's teaching. We shall use our strength to fulfill God's will, but not use God's name to fulfill our righteousness. If we need something, if we are desperate, let us pray to God. But let us not self-justify our will, our justice, by using God's name. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask your mercy we ask your blessing we ask your power and we ask your love in our life but lord we can see that there are many many of christians many of religious groups uses your word uses what you said to prove they are right they are fighting each other. And at the result, they are divided and there is a chaos. And we do not know what is right and what is wrong. Because of both of them sounds reasonable. But Lord, in this time of the Lent, please don't let us listen to the voice of the people, but let us listen to the God's voice, the heart of God. So Lord, let our life, don't let our life be the hypocrites. Don't let our life be the fruit leaves, but let our life be fruitful and let us bear the fruits. Let us plant the seed. Let there be unity. Let there be harmony. Let there be love. Let there be peace. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. God Praise God. Amen. Amen. Is there pr any prayer, concerns, joys you want to share with us today? And? Um, my sister Jan, her COVID <coughs> has ramped back up again. Mm -hmm. And um, she was even to the point where she thought the other night she was in the ER, she thought that she was having a heart attack. Oh. But after lots of tests, they decided no, everything was fine with her heart. Um, but the COVID had just ramped back up. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like prayers for her.
Thank you. And uh, the Schmidts are traveling, mm -hmm. so we want to remember them <coughs> for the next two weeks for safe travel. And our friend Donna was in the ER uh, day before yesterday. Which hospital? Uh, she was out here. PCMH? You mean Dopai County Medical yes. Hospital? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She, her blood pressure was way high and it was way oh. low. Um, didn't know what was going on, and it turns out her, she was taking conflicting medications. I see. So, um, and do you know she is still at hospital or no, at she home? Is home? She is home now. She is I see. All right. Thank you for sharing about your sister Jan and Donna Henry. Yeah. yeah that's Since they are, uh, yeah, and the Schmitz. Yeah. And if you may have heard about the Robin Brown, she's he's got a COVID too. He is staying at the nursing home and he is he is isolated from the others. Yeah. He's got uh, the serious coughing and yeah. But thankfully he doesn't have a fever now, but he is hard to breathe. Yeah. So please pray for Robin Brown. Yeah, and he is his his healing process and recovery too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, Charlotte and Tom Lilly, they supposed to get a doctor appointment last Tuesday to receive the result from the test two weeks ago, but uh, because of the, there was some mistakes, so their appointment has been delayed. So they will have another doctor appointment to check the results this coming Tuesday, and they will find it if it is the cancer or not. And if it is the cancer in tongues, yeah, he needs to admit he needs to go to Colombia to meet a specialist. So they need our prayer. So please pray for them. Any other yes? Diane? If my aunt was just this week was diagnosed with acute leukemia. What is her name? Bernice Clark. Bernice? Okay, and she she was diagnosed with but acute leukemia. Acute leukemia. Acute leukemia. Acute leukemia. Acute leukemia. Okay. Thank you for sharing. All right, and Linda, Shay, are you doing okay? I I am. You are. I am. Yes. I'm just. Hobble along, but yes, I'm here. Um, I add my mother to the COVID list as well. With and she's at Maple Grove, and she has COVID as well. So she's doing okay, but she's really congested. So I'm very concerned. And Mark is Mark has had some issues, but we found out he his heart is fine, but he does have some lung issues. So mm -hmm. we're looking into that. I see. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, it looks like the, the, another COVID wave is spreading out within the maple groups. So please pray for the resident in maple groups too. Any other concerns, joys, and updates you want to share with us? Yes, Janice? Can you pray for Stan Henderson? He is a pastor at the Cowboy Church in Bowling Green. He works the sale barns and he was at the Twenty Kingdom City on Monday working a sale on his horse and somehow a gate hit him on the back of the head and knocked him out and he fell forward into the dirt and he had two brain bleeds on the front of his head. He didn't come home last night. Um, but he's had a bad week. I see. It's going to be a slow week. I see. Thank you for the sharing about the Stan Henderson, yeah, who fell from the horse. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyone else? Any update from Brian? Uh, the lesions on his neck are almost gone. Mm -hmm. So uh, the treatment that the doctor prescribed about two weeks ago is working, um, but the nose is not coming along like it should. Um, 
He had an appointment on Friday and he still has scars and tissue and bleeding mm -hmm. farther up. So we've got new medication for that. Okay. Right. Thank you for the update. Please continue to pray for Brian. Then, if not, let us bow our head in silent prayer. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you stop us in our tracks with your reminder that discipleship is not a something, sometimes things. We are called to place our whole lives in your care, to follow you, to serve you by caring for others. Not just once in a while, but always. We admit that we are not always ready to do this. The demand is great. The need is great. Our energies are limited. Help us to place our trust and our lives in your care. You will give us the strength and courage that we will need for this step on the journey. Lord, we believe the power of prayer. And as we serve, love, and help the people around us, you give us power and you give us strength. And that multiplies our limitation. Lord, please be with us. And remember our prayer. And remember our heart. And remember names from our prayers too. As we offer the prayers to you, please remember the soul of Phil Cleaver, George Novell, and Martha Gefford. Lord, please Remember their soul, remember their family on the earth, and in the deepest sadness and grief, please be with them, touch their heart, let them be, let them feel comforted in the middle of the wilderness of the soul. Lord, please provide your tender touching their heart through the people of Jesus Christ around them. Lord, also please remember Robin Brown, Mark Shade, Don McCarty, Carolyn Hemphill, Donna and Bob Henry, B. Goodin, Tom and Shadow Dilly, Pam Watts, Katie Toad, Bonnie Turner, Debbie, Debbie Ator, Cheryl and Pete Watson, Bob Kilby, Anderson Family, Brian Rusler, Robert Blair, Joy Cleaver, Jennifer, Ron Richard, John Henry, Karen Johnson, Ping Ping Fred's mom, Oliver Stoops, Byron Goodskin Jr., Rick Gardner, John Stockley, Steve Miller, Leah Tombaugh, Carla Link, Doris Sylvie, Velma McCormick, Janice McAllister, Sharon Robert, Rich Chisler, Jean Eastman, Judith Harris, Reverend J. Ayer, Braden Jensen, Kim Washington, Kathleen Wilson, John and Tammy Smith, Jen, Ruiz, and Reverend Stan Henderson. Lord, please provide their need and be with them. We need your mercy upon them. We need your healing upon them. Lord, please release them from the pain, from the struggles, and let there be peace and comfort in their life. Please provide them good sleeping, good dream every night. And please fill their life with the strength and power through your loving care. Be with them and be with us. Help us to remember that your love is poured out for all your people and you are never far away. We pray this in your holy name, our Lord Jesus Christ, as we offer the prayer you taught us long ago. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed by thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now may I call all to come forward. Please join in the offertory prayer. God of boundless goodness, we have come to this place this day to worship you with our songs, with our words, with our gifts, and with our whole hearts. We are reminded that our discipleship decision involves more than what we bring this day to the altar. It calls us to a place where a cross that is ours alone must be picked up and carried. This, more than anything else, is why we need the community of your church. Strengthen us, we pray, not just to carry our own cross, but to help sisters and brothers carry their crosses as well. In the name of the one who bore his cross for us, amen. the world in peace and remember don't let us be the leaves but the fruits let us bear the fruits and let us plant the seed by what we say what we do what we believe and what jesus ordered and let 
us. Use our will. Let us use our power to fulfill God's will, to glorify the name of God. So your life will be blessed, be filled with love and mercy and peace. May the grace of God the Father and love of the Son, Jesus Christ, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.